Hey milk drinkers, it's been a while since we made these kinds of videos, as they are not easy to create since most of the secrets are well known by now. But after a lot of digging and literally beating the juice out of the game, I was able to put together 10 Skyrim secrets and details for you. Our older secrets videos did pretty well. If you haven't watched them yet, go check them out. If you know all the secrets mentioned, make sure to leave a comment about how great you are and come back to this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Serana personally told me that if you do, she will pay you a visit. If you subscribe to Pixel Party, I'll come and visit you tonight. See, I told you. There has been a myth that when foxes in Skyrim run away from you in the game, they are leading you to treasure. That is not true, as one of the developers confirmed it. However, it is not entirely false. Let me explain. I am under the water. The game's AI Please. uses a system to manage where an NPC can and cannot go. For example, the AI can decide to run towards you or hide. In the cases with foxes, if you run across one, its only decision is to flee. Because much of the game uses low processing power, most outdoor areas have this system I just talked about more simplified. That means it is an area of small clutter, a low chance of combat. This changes, however, when you enter a camp or ruins with points of interest, which the developer compares to a triangle. So when the fox is trying to get away from you, it is not concerned with running 100 meters away, but 100 triangles away. The shortest way to achieve that is to go to bandit camps or ruins. In other words, they don't lead you to treasure. They tend to flee to areas with treasure. So next time you see a fox, follow it. Many riches await. Or just simply kill it. Number two is the Ebony Warrior. Like all you Skyrim veterans watching, the Ebony Warrior has spent a lot of time playing Skyrim. He finished all the quests, installed every mod, married every Skyrim wife, even binge-watched all of our videos. There remains one last challenge for him. You. He believes he is ready to journey to Sovngarde, and you are the only one that can make that happen. But what is strange is that the Ebony Warrior is a Redguard, and Sovngarde is widely known to be exclusive to Nords. Redguard's afterlife is known to be in the Far Shores. So what is the deal with this guy? Many Skyrim players believe that the Ebony Warrior is an avatar of Hoonding, a god worshipped by the Redguard people. Whenever the people needed help, Hoonding would take human form. Most people come to this conclusion because he matches the Dragonborn in strength and looks similar to Raymond Ebonarm, another avatar of Hoonding. Contrary to what most players think, you don't actually have to be a Nord to enter Sovngarde. As long as you follow the Nordic pantheon of gods and have the heart of a Nord, then your name will be on the Sovngarde list. So, the evidence suggests that the Ebony Warrior is actually Hoonding, and he got bored of the Far Shores and decided that he wants to spend his vacation in Sovngarde. Going to kill this guy. Because I'm an assassin. I'm very stealthy stealthy. When you join the Dark Brotherhood, you can follow the saying, nothing is true, everything is permitted. You have the freedom to kill your targets by multiple means. You can place frenzy poison in your target's inventory, kill them while hidden, or do it in the noblest way you can. Kill them and pay off their bounty. However, this secret is not about how you kill them. It is about where you kill them. In the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary in Falkreath, there's a map. A new knife will appear each time you finish a contract being planted depending on where you killed your target. Pretty cool, right? Have you ever been to the Cloud District? Ironically, the one who is boastful about his association with the Jarl of Whiterun has never been there. He sleeps with his wife in the inn, not even the bannered mare, but a cheaper one. Pretty strange considering that Nazim owns a farm, but if you pickpocket him, you can see that he owns a key called the Key to Wintersand Manor. It seems that the developers were planning on making a pretty home for Nazim, but they didn't. You can find the same key with his wife and her colleague in the Temple of Kinnereth. Make of this what you will, but one thing is for certain, Jensen visited the Cloud District very, very often. There are strange symbols etched into some buildings. Nobody pays attention to these, but they are actually made by the Thieves' Guild. There are nine symbols in total, and they all signify things about the building they were marked on. The secret only Skyrim veterans of the highest caliber know about, the Headless Horseman, is a spectre of a warrior. 
Just kidding, our next secret is about the Dwemer. The Dwemer were the most advanced race in all of the Elder Scrolls. They made inventions that no civilization in Tamriel was able to replicate. They disappeared during the Battle of Red Mountain. You see, everyone considered the Dwemer heretics and blasphemers, as they are a race that does not have any corresponding gods. So, a certain Dwemer genius named Kagranak came up with a brilliant idea while smoking skooma. Why don't I just make a god? Literally, the Dwemer used the heart of the same god that created Nern to fashion a god that would act in their interest. Pretty badass if you ask me. But the Dunmer learned about this plan, and a war broke out between the two races. It all led to the Battle of the Red Mountain. During the battle, all the Dwemer suddenly disappeared. But where did they go? Well, to get our answer, we have to go back to Morrowind to talk to this self-proclaimed last Dwemer in Tamriel, called Yagrum Bagan. He believes that Kagranak was successful in granting his people eternal life. But by doing so, he transferred the entire race into a different realm. But why didn't Bagan go with the other Dwemer? Well, he explains that too. And no, it is not because he is fat. He says that he was in an entirely different realm during their transfer. Kind of sad. So if this theory is true, the Dwemer are partying somewhere outside Mundus. And before they went, they honoured the Aedra, the Daedra, and the whole realm with a big F.U. Then I took an arrow in the knee. It is no secret that this book is quite steamy, to say the least. What's amusing is how many NPCs in Skyrim, Morrowind, and Oblivion have it. Urag Groshub keeps it in a locked display. The Jarl of Morthal's son keeps it under his bed, and even Winterhold's Jarl places it on his second floor for those cold, lonely nights and lot more. This detail recently came to my attention. If you are on your horse and come close to a dead body, you would notice that the horse looks at it as if it's mourning. It's not that important, but it's a nice detail. The final quest of the Dark Brotherhood questline is called Hail Sithis. You have to board the Emperor's ship. Inside the ship, if you lockpick the master lock door of the Emperor's bedroom, guess what you will find on a shelf there? You guessed it right a copy of the lusty Argonian maid. I'm joking. You will find the gilded wrist guards, a unique item only found here. If you put them on, you will gain the power of the primal beast. I'm kidding again. They're useless. You can display them somewhere if you want. Sadia is a noblewoman by the name of Iman that had to flee Hammerfell and fake her identity after speaking out against the Aldmeri Dominion. The Alakir warriors that are looking for her are actually hired by the Aldmeri Dominion to find Sadia and assassinate her. She asks of the Dragonborn to go and kill Kamatu, but the Dragonborn can either kill Kamatu or listen to his side of the story, to which Kamatu will say that Sadia betrayed Hammerfell during the war against the Aldmeri Dominion. Sadia's quest has led to huge debates over which side the player should choose. If you are not a simp and you sided with the Alakir, they promise you that they would bring her safely back to Hammerfell unharmed. However, if you go to Whiterun's Hall of the Dead shortly after, you would find Sadia's urn. Dark ending indeed. And that is it for today, folks. See you in the next one.